Dr. Faisal Karim is a consultant arthroplasty surgeon at Montana Hospital, Pertamana. Thank you, sir, for being here. The stage is all yours. Uh, thanks, sir, uh, Dr. Kailas, uh, for uh, giving me an opportunity. I have been sandwiched between two life surgeries, so I'll just like quickly I will finish off my topics. So my topic is actually achieving deflection <coughs> and uh, totally replacement surgery. And uh, um, uh, I am not an advocate of a uh, hyperflex knee or uh, um, uh, so I'll just go through the present day scenario of uh, hyperflexion knees and the hyperflexion implants. So uh, range of movement after partner replacement uh, usually uh, is 100 to 110 is enough for a western day uh, patient's uh, daily activities. But for uh, Asian as well as uh, Middle East uh, patient activities, the uh, daily uh, activities requires a more correction, maybe up to 140 or more for uh, sitting cross leg or uh, scissor position or in a position or uh, sitting with one knee up and down. So the main thing uh, to achieve this uh, concept uh, is to uh, maintain with the uh, usual uh, trotinoid replacements of the principle to get rid of the pain as well as to give a stability of the knee. And uh, the surgeon should not attempt to get an increased range of movement compromising the knee stability. So hyperflexion means uh, it should be more than 140 degree. And uh, many of our uh, 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 clinical practice, we can achieve up to 125 degree. That's quite easy with the present day uh, instrumentation as well as the design as well as the current techniques. And many surgeons are little buried uh, achieving less than 100 degrees uh, for uh, giving a good satisfaction for the patients. To achieve uh, a high flexion needs, uh, we should have uh, the anatomical contour of the uh, replaced knee to that of the normal with uh, maintaining the posterior offset uh, as well as to maintain the strength of the uh, ligament, retaining the uh, PCL or uh, sub uh, substituting the PCL as well as uh, having a good uh, balanced knee. So, the uh, surgeon should uh, simultaneously restore the normal soft tissue function and the anatomical joint uh, surface. So, uh, this is the difficult technique, but it is the only way to achieve a good uh, function. So, it has been advised uh, previously, uh, the procedure bondage was uh, recommended to be resected to create a uh, sufficient function gap. But uh, recently, sufficient procedure bondage offset is recommended to avoid the insert in impingement uh, in high flex knees. So what we had learned uh, is that uh, we should, uh, the sufficient flexion gap uh, should not be created by bond resection alone, but also with the uh, soft tissue release. Along with that, an anatomical design is essential to achieve a good flexion. The factors which can affect uh, high flexion is can be divided to pre-operative factors, intraoperative factors, or post-operative factors. And the pre-operative factors, uh, the shortening of the extensor apparatus, patellabaha, cortisops contractures, multiple surgeries, contractures of the ligament and the capsular tissues, obesity, one of the main causes uh, increase overall girth of the knee, and uh, severe virus or virus which requires uh, uh, extensive soft tissue release which can produce instability if you go for a high flex knee. So these are the uh, literature to suggest that the preoperative factor, uh, factors are more uh, determined for getting a post-operative range of movement. And intraoperative factors, various uh, technical failures by the surgeons, insufficient soft tissue release, insufficient uh, or incorrect bone resection, malposition of the component, mismatch of the component design to the original knee, and insufficient reception of the uh, posterior osteophytes. And, but these are the factors which can be in the hand of the uh, surgeons to get a good range of movement, and that depends upon the surgeon's experience as well as the scale. A few examples which can go for the failure uh, to get a good range of movements. One is if you resect a more distal femur, uh, there is a ligament function is normal, but it can be lax in extension. And the surgeons try to uh, get a stability in the extension with the help of an increased uh, insert, but it produces uh, tightness in the flexion. 
so the friction range is reduced. In another, another scenario is in a question contracture case of the insufficient release of the posterior capsule of the fish, the knee may be inherent this stable in extension, but the ligament will be lax. And uh, when the knee is flexed, the posterior capsule is get relaxed and it is. The surgeons try to put uh, uh, variances with an increase in insert size, then it can be uh, stiff both in extension as well as in flexion. So, take home message in appropriate uh, bone resection cannot be compensated by soft tissue release as well as the soft, in a insufficient soft, in soft tissue release cannot be compromised by the bone resection. So, recent trend is uh, precise bone resection with uh, recommended instruments and uh, adequate soft tissue release, which are critical in uh, head flex knees. Biomechanical factors that has been the design changes to the uh, uh, high flex knee replacement surgeries, uh, which will take care of the loss of rollback movement of the femur, tibial slope, narrow flexion gap, loss of posterior uh, condyle offset, shortening of the extensor mechanism, loss of inner rotation. This, this gap reduces the uh, uh, range of movement, which can be tackled with uh, the changes in the prosthetic design by ACL substitution or retaining that ACL or uh, which have a uh, osteotomy of the, the posterior slop or a slop in the insert, a short uh, posterior offset in case of a narrow flexion gap and a long posterior offset uh, in case of a loss of uh, posterior condylar offset and deep patellar through to accommodate the patellar tendon in deep flexion to produce a, a relative uh, lengthening of the uh, extensor mechanism if there is a shortening of the extensor mechanism as well as a mobile tibial insert and the picture shows in a normal uh, implants uh, or if you get to achieve a good flexion or high flexion then the, the short posterior end of the uh, posterior flange of the implants can produce a point on dextrose on the tibial insert which can produce a wear of the folate pin and increase loosening. So this uh, implant design changes with the thickening and the reduced uh, uh, radius of curvature of the posterior uh, contour has been done. So that increases the posterior offset and increases the range of and prevent the contact of the posterior aspect of femur to that of the insert in high flexion. Or some companies uh, produce a beveling of the posterior uh, keep the lip of the insert so that uh, the, uh, during high flexion it will not reach onto the posterior aspect of the uh, femur. So, but simply putting the implant uh, cannot change the uh, cannot increase the range of movement. Uh, uh, in the uh, total knee replacement, so always adhere to the proper balancing and the ligament uh, tensioning as well as the release uh, along with the implants. Postoperative factors, uh, we should have produced a, a adequate, uh, we should uh, follow the adequate rehabilitation technique which can, we should prevent uh, this uh, postoperative arthrofibrosis as well as uh, uh, contracture of the extensor mechanism. And uh, standard uh, post-operative rehabilitation technique has to be followed rather than going for an aggressive uh, techniques. And the concerns with the high flex knees, uh, one is that the point contact stress on the posterior aspect of the insert producing an early uh, polyethylene wear. And a uh, few uh, uh, studies from the Korea uh, shows that uh, increased flexion can produce a posterior condylar loosening because of the stress onto the posterior aspect of the femur and uh, it is attributed to the uh, absence of femoral load sharing between the prosthetic component and uh, contact of bone during flexion. So conclusion to obtain deflection in artificial knee we should simultaneously restore the normal ligament balance and the anatomical joint surface and uh, we should always look for the preoperative kind of movement and should adhere to that and to inform the patient regarding the postoperative end of movement. And precise soft tissue release, bone resection are most essential for the surgeons. And we should try to prevent the uh, factors which can produce postoperative arthrofibrosis and contracture of the extensor mechanism. High flex designs have a greater risk for loosening of the femoral component than conventional knee replacement, which has been uh, shown in a lot of literatures. And the internal geometry of the femoral component and the presence of flex, which play an important role in the enhancing the fixation of the high flex knees. Thank you.